If you're new to growing microgreens, you might not know whether to buy trays with holes or trays without holes. So in this video, I'm gonna clear all of that up for you. For the best microgreens content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you get notified when I come out with new microgreens videos on Tuesdays. The holes in these microgreens trays actually have everything to do with watering and water containment. I've been watering the same exact way since I first started my business four years ago. Um, it's really simple, it works really well, but if you stay to the end of the video, I'm actually gonna share with you an even better way of watering, which is what I plan to switching to in the future. But definitely stay tuned because you're about to hear exactly what these holes are all about. Trays with holes and trays without holes serve two different purposes. Trays with holes allow for water drainage as well as for water to come up into your growing medium when you're bottom watering your microgreens. Trays without holes don't allow for any water drainage and will actually contain all the water within the tray. Commonly, these two trays are actually used together in tandem, but I'm also gonna mention some other ways that you can actually get away with using one tray. I have seen people use only the one tray without holes and I actually don't recommend this method at all. If your growing medium becomes fully saturated, this water is gonna have nowhere to go, and then the roots of your plants are gonna be sitting in this waterlogged environment, they're gonna be deprived of oxygen, and then you're gonna run into certain problems that often come along with overwatering, like mold and fungus and damping off. Comment below really quick and let me know if you have ever experienced problems with your microgreens due to overwatering. I have a feeling this is one of the most common issues in the industry um, when it comes to having a tray just go bad. So let me know below if you've experienced anything like this. So now there are two correct ways that I recommend using these trays. The first way is the most common and simple where you're taking a tray with holes and placing it inside of a tray without holes. This allows for some water drainage out of that top tray but also keeps the water contained in that bottom tray. So that way when you're watering, water isn't just flowing out and all over the place um, onto like whatever's below, whether it's the floor or whether it's trays beneath that you really don't want getting wet. Speaking of getting plants wet, um, not only can you use these trays for top watering, but you can separate these two trays and add water beneath which is called bottom watering. And this allows the water to seep up into your growing medium from the bottom, preventing your microgreens from ever getting wet during watering. Now the same method of watering can actually be done on a larger and more automated scale by using flood and drain tables. So instead of putting a tray with holes inside of a tray without holes, you're essentially putting between four and 16 trays with holes inside one huge tray that essentially doesn't have holes. And the way this system works is the water is pumped into that huge tray without holes. Uh, the water rises up, hits the growing medium of the trays, right? Because there's holes in those trays, which allow the water to come up through it. It, it gets the growing medium wet and saturated, and then the water flows back out of that large flood and drain tray, hence the name flood and drain, which then allows your smaller trays with holes to um, drain the water back out. So it's a very similar concept to putting a tray with holes inside a tray without holes, but it's more automated. You're doing it on a larger scale. And this is actually better because let's say you did bottom watering with your two trays and you overwatered. If that water goes above that bottom tray and just sits in that top tray, there's nowhere for that water to go. It can't drain out of that top tray, even though there's holes, because there's so much water in there. Now with the flood and drain tables, it comes up, hits the trays, and then flows back out. So it essentially keeps your growing medium at the perfect moisture content. Not to mention, you can put this on a timer so it goes off automatically, maybe even at a weird time where you wouldn't be in the farm that might be more ideal, like say early in the morning. It's just an amazing way to water your plants because it's automated and it's borderline perfect and reduces human error. So the answer is yes, microgreens trays need holes. Whether you're growing tray inside of a tray or whether you're growing with the flood and drain tables, you should really have holes in your microgreens trays 
um, instead of using a tray that doesn't have holes because of the problems I mentioned before. So my answer to this question is yes, microgreens trays need holes. So now you know the whole deal uh, with these holes in the microgreens trays, but what if you have other questions or concerns? I created a Facebook group called the microgreens support group um, where you can go in there and ask any questions you might have. And there's growers from all over the world in there who are happy to help, including myself. This specific group that I started is actually known as the most positive and supportive and helpful microgreens group on the internet. So I highly recommend joining it and I hope to see you in there. Check out the video below to learn how to sanitize your microgreens trays or use the other video to see exactly where to buy the best trays on the market. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with anybody you think it may help. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.